Hello, my name is Jeremy, this is Red Means Recording, and this is a series of videos going over the Teenage Engineering OP1, this thing, geared towards uh, absolute beginners or people that don't have one. Um, and today we're going to go over the LFO modulation section in the uh, OP1, which can be applied to both the synth and the drums. So um, let's go ahead and give that a try. I'm going to create a new preset that is sort of normal-ish. <laughs> Let's go up to a normal octave. We're going to hit 2 and hit shift and change this to a polyphonic mode. No portamento, which is the slide between notes. And we're going to go over and adjust our sound a little bit. To something that's pleasing to listen to. Nice and neutral. Okay, so in the synth engine, if you go to 4, um, you will get to the LFO page. And right now you can see LFO is off. So let's go ahead and hit Shift 4 and start at the top with Bend. Now you can see in the interface here that there's this weird little thing there. I think Bend was intended to use with, um, you can take these knobs off and put like uh, Lego technique things on them. But anyways, this will give us a basic idea of how uh, the LFO is assigned. So in this particular LFO or modulator, modulation source, since it's, you know, manual here, um, the number here represents the amount. And then you can go up to 100. This is obviously the modulator itself. Things right here, these this circle of colored things, uh, represents the uh, destination. And if you go to your synth, um, you have four colored knobs that are assigned to various sound parameters. So with this particular one, the uh, green knob is going to adjust the destination. And you can see that there's a ring of colored circles right here. And those represent the parameters that you'll be adjusting. Like the synth has these four parameters here. So if I go back to the LFO, I'm now adjusting the blue parameter of the synthesizer. Green. And so on. Now I can change the destination here by turning this. This is going to affect the effects. So if I go and turn on an effect, let's go ahead and turn on delay. Now that's the speed, so we are hearing a change there, which is cool. And then finally, the big speed. We'll be able to see this in action with a different LFO where I don't actually have to touch the modulator. Uh, other sources include... That's it for right there. We got volume and pitch, effects, envelope, and uh, what do you call it? Uh, the synth thing. So let's go ahead and pick a different one. Crank. Again, this was sort of intended with the weird knobs that Teenage Engineering will sell you. Same effect parameters can be selected here. That's kind of cool. And the amount is in green. All right, let's go to element. Element uh, is like value, which uh, I use most. Um, but element's going to have some interesting things that you can do. So let's go ahead and turn the amount up. Now, G is a sensor, a gyroscopic sensor built into the OP1. Turn this up even more. Let's go ahead and turn this over to red. So that's kind of cool. If you want to throw your OP1 around. Microphone. Hey. Let's go ahead and switch this to the mic in our input thing. Uh, check out the how to sample video if uh, you don't remember how to do that. Hey. Switch this over to uh, like pitch. So that's kind of cool. You can uh, modulate the uh, synth or drum from an external source, which is pretty nifty. Uh, envelope. So if we go over to our envelope and adjust this. Now the envelope right here is affecting these parameters. In this case, that's pitch. Let's go ahead and switch this back to the synth. Switch this to like red. And 
go over to our synth and watch the red dot. That's because this envelope is shaping how that is now modulated. So I could change this to something like this. It doesn't always react visually, but you can hear that this sharpened envelope is now affecting the red parameter of the synth. And you can, you know, obviously have it do different things like, let's see, green is the speed of the delay we have on. You can see it affecting that there. And if I wanted to change that, I could. That's pretty cool. I don't know what this is. But it does something. If we go to MIDI, I'm not gonna be able to show this off right now, but basically if you send MIDI from an external source like Ableton or anything that can send MIDI into this via the USB cable, this will show up as a MIDI device in your computer if you uh, install the MIDI thing. <laughs> anyway, so this needs an external MIDI source to be able to work. Random. Let's fuck with this. So I'm gonna turn the amount up all the way. With the blue, I'm going to go. There we go. So the uh, random thing creates a random signal and applies it to uh, whatever the um, destination's parameters are. And you have a couple controls. You have the amount, the speed. And if we go back to our synth, you'll see it's flipping out, having a little bit of a seizure over there. This envelope thing is really cool. Uh, I actually, use this in some other things, but basically this is ramp up the amount of the effect over time. If I wanted to hit right at the beginning, I could do this. Now it hits right when the key happens, or it could fade out. I can act as, uh, with the envelope here, or act on the envelope. That's kind of fun. Look at it, dancing around. Um, or uh, effects, so let's go. Now our effect is going crazy. Go ahead and sharpen our envelope a little bit. Tremolo is very useful, which is the next LFO we're gonna be messing with. This gives you control over the speed of the effects. You have synced speed to the left and non-sync speed to the right. And then this is sort of about vibrato right here. And this is a tremolo. So let's go ahead and hear what that sounds like. So vibrato. Actually go negative as well. And tremolo. You have that cool envelope thing over here. So it'll fade in. Which is very useful for solos as you can hear right now. Let's go ahead and switch this over to a monophonic mode. And so basically it becomes like a, a solo instrument. You can hear that LFO kicking in. So I might want this to be Kicking a little faster. And then you have control over uh, the waveform if you hold shift. It also works to give a little bit of interest to things like um, keyboard sounds, you know, you get a little bit of tremolo going on. Now you can hear that I'm able to see how it's like not synced. It's not, it depends on when you press the key. So even though you have a beat synced, Even 
though you have a beat synced uh, ability here, it will still depend on how you press the key. You can hear that it's all depending on how I press that key. Which actually is pretty cool. I wish there was an option to sync it though, because this is a way that you can get like a fake side chain sound, which is pretty useful. But it's pretty. Uh, next up is value, and uh, this is the one that I use probably as much as tremolo. This is going to send a value based on the time. Over to a destination. And you can see it working right here. Yeah, go. Mm. Mm. Dance it. Yeah, yeah. You do have a free running mode here, which is useful. Or rather, you can assign it to the envelope. In this case, it's <laughs> trying to create a golden ratio graphic right there. And then effects. So if I was to change to a different effect, like. Our CWO right here. And get some pretty wild stuff. So yeah, LFOs are super, super, super useful. Um, some of them more so than others, honestly, but that is the modulation section of the OP-1. On the drums, you have access to it too. This is the D-Box engine, so it's actually a synth engine, which is going to give us some interesting stuff going on. So let me go with the random element right here. You can see that it's assigned to the synth. Now if we go back here, we're going to see values jumping around, which is really cool. So it's kind of a way to get some random drums, I guess. Let's go ahead and add some hi-hats to this so we can hear what that sounds like. And then you can assign this to other things too. So if I go to the effects, you can see that it will go crazy on the effects. Pretty rad, right? I was to change this to, let's say, a sample drum kit. I could get some interesting things. I'll go back to our drum kit and see that it's messing with the slice points the in and out points, and the play mode, which is pretty wild. This is all just with the random LFO, so obviously you could dial in some more stuff, but I just, I think this is a interesting way to show off just how crazy that, that this can get and how powerful it is. Pretty dope, right? So those are the modulation sources within the OP-1. Hopefully I didn't miss anything. If I did, let me know in the comments. My name's Jeremy, this is Red Means Recording, and I'll see you in the next video. Have a good day.